Hi everyone, welcome back to Photoshop Next. In this class, we are going to talk about color. The first thing to know about color is that you have three primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. With these colors, you can mix them together and create all the colors of the rainbow. If you mix the primary colors, you get what's called secondary colors. Blue and yellow make green, yellow and red make orange, and then red and blue make magenta. Here you can see you have your primary colors here and when you mix these primary colors together you get secondary colors and you see green, orange, and then magenta or sometimes purple and then when you mix the secondary colors together with the primary colors you get tertiary colors and you can see we are starting to build all the colors of the rainbow. So this is called a color wheel. Now, interesting thing about the color wheel is that when you take these primary colors together and you create the color wheel is that you have colors on the opposite end of the spectrum. These are called complementary colors. As far as color value goes, they have the highest contrast and they also complement each other. So if you want to create something really vibrant and colorful and really eye-catching, a lot of designers will mix complementary colors together. So let's go over to one of my favorite websites, color.adobe.com. This is actually one of Adobe's websites. It is a great place to get color themes, to just study color. And you can come here and find just an infinite number of color themes. People vote on them. They share them. You can import these colors into Photoshop. And it's a really cool place just to see colors that work together. They also have a cool tool called Adobe Color Create. And here, you can get an idea. So these are complementary colors. So you can go and you can actually scan around the color wheel and see how complementary colors work. And for example, if I choose blue, the complementary color of blue is going to be this kind of yellow and orange, depending on the shade of blue. And then if you go red, you can see green. Hey, these are Christmas colors. And then if you keep going further down, you can see how that works. So you have analogous colors, which are colors that are next to each other in the color wheel. And then you have triads, which they form a triangle on the color wheel. And then you have compound colors, which gets a little more complicated. We won't talk about that. So that's a quick introduction to color theory. So what's really cool about Adobe Color is that if you go over to Window, Extensions, and you can select Adobe Color Themes. Now this is kind of new to Photoshop, so you really need Photoshop CC. And you click this, and here you have that tool right here. So this is really, really cool. For example, okay, I'm on my color picker, and I'm going to pick, let's say I want kind of a, a purple slash magenta color. Okay, so that's my foreground color. So what you can do here, with the Adobe Color Theme, and again, I just click Windows, Extensions, Adobe Color Themes, click the, the color in the center, and then this icon underneath it, Set Selected Color. So what that does is that sets the color in the foreground here. Now what I can see are the complementary colors. So really cool, actually you can click here, and I have it clicked to complementary. If I wanna see compound colors, I can click here. Now all these colors work together. So if you're working on a design, you kind of have your color palette right here just by choosing a single color. It's pretty cool. So, you know, suppose, uh, you know, you kind of want to go more purple. All right, no problem. So we select the first color there, there. Now you can see there's purple. Kind of cool. And you know these colors work together. So let's see here. I want to go, I'm kind of digging this one. Let's do this one. There we go. Yeah. This is a really neat thing. You can also, you can import your themes. You can see and you can explore themes. As you can see, this is a really neat extension. So now let's go over to our first project. So here's an image I found on a public domain site. And what I'm thinking about doing is just recoloring it. So let's see how we can use Adobe Color Themes to enhance this image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna select the sky. All right, so I got that and I'm gonna create a new layer and that's going to be the sky. Okay, now I want to select the water. I'm using the quick selection tool and just kind of creating a quick and I'm going to, so that's purple and let's choose a different color 
for this and we're gonna switch it up in a bit but just that's the water from the water let's get this dock here there we go it's just a quick click new layer and then just choose another random color it doesn't matter at this point okay there's the dock and then what we'll do is we'll get the guy in the center I probably need to zoom in there we go new layer and we'll make this one black okay so let's see how we can enhance this image so we got everything set up okay so the first thing we're gonna do let's change the color of the sky so this is the purple that we want and what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend this to color and there we go we made the sky purple pretty cool now we're gonna do we're gonna change the color of the dock or actually let's change the color of the water next so it's all right so now we go back to our tools create and we're gonna change the color to the dock to green so what I'm doing is I select here I have my eyedropper tool and I'm just gonna drag this all the way over here it's kind of a quick way and let's see what happens when we turn this so there we go that's a little bit strong let's make it a little bit how about we go whoops there and then I'm gonna go color so that's kind of cool I'm digging that and then the dock let's go with the dark there we go and then we have our guy right there and so the dock we need to color Add color there so that's kind of a neat picture as you can see okay I need to clean some parts of this image up there we go I just want to make sure everything's covered cool let me go back to color that works okay so then what I can do let's take this and group it all together call this design and then I'm gonna go back I hit D to set my colors back to black and white I'm gonna go back to my brush tool put a mask over us and I have uh, this guy selected here it's going to expand it a little bit more all right and what I can do go here And then we can go here to our blending options. So there we go. And it's ready for. There you go. It's cropped out. And so that's kind of a way you can use this Adobe Color Extension with your projects to just kind of make some interesting designs and so what you can do with this you know if you want to roll it back a little bit maybe the colors are a bit too strong that looks kind of cool though I like how there's a gradient there and kind of roll it back simple colors simple shapes and uh, interesting design and this this can say anything I mean you want to get away take me away travel whatever message you want but you get the idea on how quickly you can create a design using these tools all right so let's see here that's the first one I got a call from our friend Johnny again <laughs> and he's now he has a new shop in Palm Springs and what he wants he wants to create a poster for his shop and he had an idea and he says can you just give me an animal with red glasses okay you want that no problem Johnny so let's see how quickly we can get that together so here's our next project
I got this from Pixabay. It was a public domain image. I think it's a red panda. And so what I want to do, I am going to desaturate them. So let's desaturate the panda. And I'm just doing the adjustment layers. And then what I want to do, see if I can enhance his, get the colors a little bit more popping, or the, the contrast. Enhance the image a little bit, and then maybe we can also maybe add some contrast to it. Just a little bit of contrast. Bright contrast. All right, cool. I'm kind of digging that. We'll put this in a folder, call it red panda, and then convert this into a smart object. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is go to filters. So I haven't talked about this yet too much. So what a lot of people do, a lot of the crazy stuff you see in Photoshop are actually done using filters. And here you can blur a photo. So this is a really popular thing people do. For example, Gaussian blur. And you can blur your photo to get kind of a cool depth. And where are some other popular filters? So blur is pretty popular. And then the filter gallery. So this is really cool. And what I'm thinking about doing, that's kind of interesting. Let's see if we can turn them into like a sketch. So there's all kinds of cool filters you can do. You can do like water paper filter, for example. And so, but I kind of like this sketch. And let's see here. So this is the stamp tool. And here you have different options for each particular filter. Uh, I think that works. We'll just go on and leave that right there. Cool. Now what we're going to do is, so this layer right here, let's see, let's hide the panda, hide the bottom. So here's some vector hipster glasses I found again on Pixabay. And what we're going to do is we are going to color this red. So let's do solid color. Let's get red. That's cool. And then we're going to hit Alt Option. We got this red, put our panda back. We're going to take this, put it in a folder, red glasses. See here, we can move this, scale it, tilt it. There we go. I'm kind of digging this. This is cool. And let's get this red really. Let's get some more red. There we go. Maybe darken it a little bit. I'm kind of digging it. That's pretty cool. So now what we can do, scale it up just so you see his face there. And I think this will make a great poster for Johnny. So that's it. I wanted to make this as quick as possible for you. And uh, that's a kind of an introduction to uh, color in Photoshop. One more thing. Okay. So this is your color picker. And one of the things I use the most with the color picker. So I primarily don't worry about these too much. And you have right here is your hue, saturation, and brightness. And then you have RGB, red, green, blue. So I mentioned that primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Well, when working with pixels and a display, uh, the yellow actually gets replaced with green. And so actually what you have is green, red, and blue. And then by mixing those colors together, you get all the colors of the rainbow. So with red, the highest number you can have is 255. So if I do 00, zero you can see there's red. And then if I have zero here, 255 green and then 255 for blue. Now what I can do is mix red and green together and you can see you get pure yellow. So all I did was 255, 255. Then what I can do, I can mix green and blue together and you can see you get cyan. So that's kind of a cool trick. And then if I mix red and blue together, you see there's magenta. So that is your RGB values. And so um, th this is a pretty common value that people use. 
Um, down here is your hexa values that you use. Um, this I use a lot for the web. Um, websites tend to use this uh, hexadecimal value and the way it works is that the first two characters are red, the next two are green, and then the last two are blue. I don't want to get too much into that because you, for Photoshop you generally just use red, green, and blue. And then up here is your hue, saturation, and brightness. Now I actually use this tool more than RGB. And so with the hue, um, this is the main thing you want to worry about. So whenever you're using this color tool right here, the main thing you want to get out of this, for example, if we went and selected this color here, let's see if we can do that, this green. So the hue is 96. So the important thing is, is that the hue stays the same. But what you can do is you can alter the saturation and the brightness. So saturation is how vibrant is the color. So you can see it's really vibrant. And then the brightness is this how much light versus darkness of the color. So if I make it really bright and really high saturated, you can see it's almost like a fluorescent green. And then if I desaturate it, it goes slowly to white. And then if I go to my brightness, I can make it really dark. So if you want kind of a muted colors, the, a, a thing to do is to lower the brightness and the saturation and you can see the green becomes muted. However, because the hue is the same, it still works with your colors here. So whenever you're given a color palette, let's go to like explore, for example. For example, you have this right here as your color palette. Um, sometimes it can be difficult when you're mixing these colors together because like, for example, you have this, this beige here and then all of a sudden you want to add this orange to it and you notice when it's text, it, there's not enough contrast. So one of the things you can do to work with contrast is that just make sure that the hue is the same. For example, just select that tool. For example, your hue is five. At that point, you can alter the brightness and the saturation to make sure they have a lot of contrast within your design elements. So that's one of the key things when working with colors is to keep in mind about hue and brightness and the saturation. So your hues are gonna remain the same in your color palette, but then your brightness and saturation, you're gonna constantly alter to improve the looks of your design. Okay, so that I just wanted to have a quick intro to color theory and using colors in Photoshop.